is a lake on Greenland cracking up? Well, according to recent research, Meltwater Lake on a glacier located at 79 degrees north latitude triggers lasting cracks and ice uplift. Hello friends, Jim here. So what is going on? This is a top view uh, from, taken from a helicopter of this deep lake located at 79 degrees north latitude. Since the mid-1990s, the Greenland ice sheet has been losing mass, leaving only three floating tongues remaining. One of these, and I'll try my best to pronounce it, is Njorg Halsfjertsbrei, or the 79 degree north glacier. Probably easy to refer to that way. Is already showing the first signs of instability. In a new study, researchers from the Alfred Wegener Institute investigated how, caused by global warming, a 21 square kilometer large meltwater lake formed and developed on the surface of this glacier. They observed that over the years, this lake has caused gigantic cracks and the outflowing water is lifting the glacier. Their findings have been published in the journal, The Cryosphere. The lake first appeared in the observation data of the year 1995. There were no lakes in this area of the 79 degree North Glacier before the rise in atmospheric temperatures in the mid 1990s, as Professor Angelica Humbert, a glaciologist at the Alfred Wagner Institute, Helmholtz Center for Polar Marine Research stated. From the time of its formation in 1995 until 2023, the lake's water repeatedly and abruptly drained through channels and cracks in the ice, causing massive amounts of fresh water to reach the edge of the glacier tongue towards the ocean. There were a total of seven such drainage events, four of which took place in the last five years. During these drainages, extensive triangular fracture fields with cracks in the ice formed from 2019 onwards, which are shaped differently from all lake drainages I have seen so far, Humbert says. Some of these cracks form channels with openings several dozen meters wide, referred to as a moulin. Water flows through these moulins also altered the main drainage of the lake, meaning that within hours, a huge amount of water reaches the base of the ice sheet. This is important. To get all this liquid water reaches the base of the ice sheet. That's where it sits on the bedrock. That's where it lubricates and it makes movement of the glacier easier. It can slide easier, but in some cases, as apparently in this situation here, it can cause enough hydrostatic pressure that will then actually lift the ice upwards. For the first time, we have now measured the channels that form in the ice during drainage and how they change over the years, says Humbert. After the lake formed in 1995, its size decreased over time with the first cracks appearing. In recent years, the drainage has occurred at increasingly shorter intervals. Form the lake quickly drains, basically what she's saying. We suspect that this is due to the triangular moulins that have been reactivated repeatedly over the years since 2019. The material behavior of the glacier plays a role here. On the one hand, the ice behaves like an extremely thick, viscous fluid that flows slowly over the substrate. At the same time, however, it is also elastic, allowing it to deform and return to its original shape, akin to a rubber band. The elastic nature of the ice is what allows cracks and channels to form in the first place. 
On the other hand, the creeping nature of the ice helps channels inside the glacier to close again over time after the drainage has taken place. The size of the triangular moulin fractures on the surface remains unchanged for several years. Radar images show that although they change over time inside the glacier, they are still detectable years after their formation. This data also reveals that there is a network of cracks and channels, meaning that there is more than one way for the water to escape. And by the way, in this photo, in this photos here, the very imaging here, here's the lake, right here. Right here's the a little darker there. There's your lake. So now, how is the meltwater lifting the glaciers? Well, the researchers were able to see shadows along the cracks in some aerial photos. In some cases, the ice at the fracture uh, surfaces have also shifted in height as if it raised more on one side of the moulin than on the other. So, oftentimes you get a crack in the ice, the water, you know, as we just discussed, makes its way down to the base. But it's not a straight vertical. It, it kind of, wherever the fracture lines are, however the, the, uh, the planes of the ice crystals uh, orientate themselves, it will, the water will follow this, you know, following the least the path of least resistance and some of this could involve horizontal movement and if you get a horizontal movement you could get like a crack the largest shift is encountered directly in the lake which is due to the enormous masses of water that have entered the cracks beneath the glacier and formed the sub glacial lake there radar images from inside show that a blister has apparently formed on this lake beneath the ice, pushing the glacier upwards at this point. Remember, okay, water has, you know, fresh water right at uh, zero C has a, a density that is lesser than at its coldest, which is 4C. This is for fresh water. So, and due to the nature of the ice uh, molecules and the type of crystals they form, as the water cools down to about zero, it expands. That's, and it, most likely this expansion, because it's pretty much going to be right at about zero. It's not going to be at four, it's going to be right about at zero that is going probably helping to uh, push the ice about and what's interesting is that even after more than 15 years after the first drainage the cracks are still visible on the surface so they uh, the researchers use very they use satellite remote sensing data use data from airborne surveys uh, they, they were able to see how the lake fills and drains, with the pathway that the water took within the uh, glacier, uh, viscoelastic uh, modeling, like viscosity, right, enabled them to determine whether and how drainage paths close over time. So the question that now is raised is, have the frequent drainages forced the glacier system into a new state, or can the system still return to a normal winter state in spite of these extreme amounts of water? That's an important question to ask. That is what they're working to try and get a handle on. In just 10 years, recurring patterns and regularity have developed in the drainage with massive and abrupt changes in meltwater inflow on a time scale of hours to days. That's pretty quick. These are extreme disturbances within the system and has not yet been investigated whether the glacial system can absorb this amount of water and is able to influence the drainage itself so why is this important because it, it provides data that can then utilize and in, incorporate integrate the cracks into ice sheet models and then examining researching how they form and influence the glacier overall 
So uh, Alfred Wegener Institute researchers are working closely with scientists from uh, TU Darmstadt and the University of Stuttgart on the modeling. Uh, understanding and taking the behavior and effects of cracks in the glacier into account is particularly important when regarding the development of the lake at 79 degrees north latitude. Due to the advancing warming of the atmosphere, the fractured surfaces have been occurring further and further up the slope. Ooh, this is critical. Further and further up the slope, impacting on an increasingly larger area of the glacier. So, that does not bode well, if you really think about it. Because that might, uh, uh, you know, in addition to, you know, the cracks and lifting part of the ice, it can also facilitate the movement of the glacier itself, possibly to the sea, where possibly it calves off and goes into the ocean. 79 degrees north, that's, that's a bit up there. So, um, you know, put in perspective, uh, 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 Point uh, Utkiatvik uh, in Alaska, the, the furthest northerly point on the North American continent, is at about 72 degrees north latitude. So we're talking another seven uh, degrees, and so, you know, that's going to be oh about 670 kilometers further north or so so that's uh that does have ramifications for the uh, that part of the northern hemisphere and probably not going to be good so something to uh keep an eye on because this does have major implications freshwater input you know loss of ice what that means to albedo and so on and so forth all things we've been discussing for years but this is added to it it's another area of concern so there you have it glacier at 79 degrees north latitude on greenland is cracking up and it's not a funny thing until next time thank you for your time